Hey everyone, how's it going? My name's Silver, welcome back to the channel, and if you guys can't tell by the title of this video, what I'm showing you in this video, and what this video is about, I really got no hope for you. <coughs> Alrighty guys, so today we're here to cover my version of an extreme fight deck, meaning, um, well, I built a deck. Me and Black Moon played it in a stream a couple days ago, and it did really well. And a lot of you, one guy in particular, or not one guy, because I don't know if he's a guy, one person in particular wants to see my deck break down and sort of go over my process of how this deck runs. Now, one thing I really like about the V-Series is none of the cards are restricted to having a certain type of Vanguard. This I don't think they are. So this deck really flourishes well. Let's start off with the starter. We have Lizard Runner on Ducks. When you ride, when you ride this card, draw a card. So he is the main. Why? Okay. Um. Can I not add stuff to hand in this? Um. Okay, I'll just try drawing him. Cool. I can't select him for whatever reason, but all right. So we run a copy of him. I'm really confused why I can't select him. Oh, um, hmm. Well, that's problematic, is it not? There we go. Deck editor. Go back. Um, test, maybe that's why. There we go, yeah, so. Undo, or Undux, uh, yeah, I can't say his name, is the starter. Don't know why the game wasn't working, but it wasn't. So, he is the starter, and he is the simple right upon draw card. Pretty, pretty nice card overall. Um, I can no longer select him after that either. I think the game's slightly broken. Can I select other cards? I can't. All right. Well, the next is the draw triggers, which we run one of each one. So we run one Kagero, one Oracle, one Royal Paladin, and one Nova. They all essentially do the same thing. Uh, or they all do do the same thing. Uh, guard and draw a card. And these... Okay. That's why I couldn't select you, is because you were still there. So yeah, the uh, draw triggers. Um, uh, I'll allow you one draw, and you run one of each. This is probably the only trigger you run four of, and that is the Nova Grappler front triggers. Uh, reason being is they're useful, and being that Nova Grappler currently is the only clan to have said front trigger or turbo razor, it does have a nice shield value and allows to plus 15k to the column. So if you drive check it, it is pretty nice. Um, from there, the we have sort of the same breakdown. I'm going to put these to damage zone. From there, we run four heal triggers. We run one uh one wall boy, one monk, one Elaine, and one Magius. Uh, reason for running these four is again it depends. I you run multiple because your goal is to have at least one of each unit from the from each clan out, so you could use said card. Um, if you don't have them, then it can be a little bit tricky. We don't have a unit because um, I believe the trigger effect still applies. If you don't have a unit out on the field that shares the clan at the very least, then you can't use the trigger. So your goal is to sort of it is that hopefully you can drive check one of these when you have at least one of every unit out on the field, or um, just hopefully have the same clan out. And we run almost a similar breakdown for criticals. We run one psychic bird. One Flogo, I honestly would probably... Um, and these triggers can be mix and match how you want, but... We run two Demon... Uh, ma demonic uh, Dragon Mage. Um, I didn't think it was entirely fair 
to give Nova Grappler a critical here. Um, you could. Uh, it would be the same concept as running any of these triggers in the lineup. Run one of each. You could technically just null and void the front triggers in well as well. And um, just decide to run two of each trigger for each clan for um, the criticals or draws. But that's completely up to the user. And then from there, we have three Flame of Hopes, which um, during your turn, when it boosts a unit, this gets 3k. And when one of your opponent's rear guards is retired, you retire this card, cause, or retire this card, draw a card, and counter charge one. Run it for, obviously, it's an 11k booster and its draw engine. Um, and we'll just throw you guys to the damage zone as well. Um, next, you tend to run a lot of three of. Next, you run three custom razors. Um, your goal is to get this first turn, so you can attack right off the bat if you have to go first. Um, it also fills out a Nova Grappler Grade 1 slot. Your idea with this deck is to essentially rush, so having a lot of low grades in your opening hand aren't bad, because if you get... Say you get four grid ones even on a mall. If you have one of each of the clans, you can just throw all four out to the field and be nanny. What are you gonna do? We also run four pongles, because this deck can be very soul reliant. So there's always the bonus from these. Soul charging, and if you get a trigger from the from the sixteen you run, he gets five K, making him a thirteen K booster. Overall, a good card, and that hence why I like to run three. But that's personal preference. Um, I guess we'll send these other two to hand, and we'll send you to hand as well. From there, we also run three Gemini to, again, counter charge. I thought this deck would counter blast more, um, but it doesn't. And that's partially my fault to a degree. I meant to throw Blaster Blade into this deck for that retire. And hence why I threw the counter chargers in and soul chargers. But I was wrong, so I guess the grid one it, it does need some work. But yeah, we run three Gemini, and that ends the grid one lineup at a total of twelve units. Um per Except, or no, not 12. That runs at 9. Because we don't run any Kogiro grade ones. But we change that into the grade 2 lineup. In there, we run two Promised Daughters. Which, her skill is during the battle that this unit attacks a Vanguard. If the number of cards in your hand is 4 more, 6k, and it can't be retired. Um, good for building big columns. Just works really well with the draw engine that I have in this deck. We also run two Nahalams. Um, for retire for Ermo. And then we run three high beast or high dog trainers for the Pongle. And honestly, for any of the other high beast cards we might have in the deck, honestly, we have one, two, we have two, five. So she can be boosted to gain a 3k bonus. And then last but not least, our main staple of the whole lineup, or not really the whole lineup, but hey, what are you going to do? For the last Grade 2, we run four Silent Toms, because consistency on being able to counter the last one, get 6k, and nullify the normal guards from an opponent is really big. Again, we run front triggers, so you have to think about it. He gets... Just if you do basic math, he gets 6k from himself. And then if you drive check a front trigger, he'll get another 10k. And then if he's boosted, which you can't, I mean, even if I go to the battle phase, you can't boost. Let's just say that's a boost. You can't guard, you can only throw down triggers in front of him. And if he's holding a crit, that's just another 10k. But yeah, so we run four Silent Toms. 
And then lastly, what this deck was built for is its grade 3 lineup. Your, hopefully your idea is, is to get one of your two perfect razors or one of your two CEOs in your opening hand. So yes, you do run two perfect razors and two CEOs. That might seem a bit risky, but the idea is to uh, hopefully ride three times in the g game. Um, I think the most preferred method of ride is protect excel to get that excel circle and then you can go into one of your three finishers again it's meant to try to proc all three we run three waterfalls in total two soul savers and one deer so the reason for all of this is to be okay well i have to ride waterfall now I get a force mark. I can activate that. Give it to my vanguard. Well, I couldn't ride waterfall, but I had soul saver. Or maybe you do get to ride soul saver after riding waterfall. Well, being that it allows me to do this, and then I could have this here. Wow, now all my rear guards get 15k. Or maybe you just have the ability to ride victorious deer because. God knows this game has gone on long enough at this point. But you get another protect mark. And that's sort of what you want. And then you'll be able to call, you know, another unit to that circle. You have all these other units on your field. At this point, hopefully, by the time all this has happened, um, you're good to go. And I know some people might be worrying about deck consistency. Let me just tell you that this deck is by far the most consistent thing I have ever probably built on this thing. I've drawn several hands myself, and it's pretty good. I'm going to try to put all the cards back because I don't have time to edit this tonight. So um, I want to just show how consistent it is. Um, actually, I got to exit out of the app and reopen it because those force marks won't go away and I want to show you the consistent draws and my OCD won't allow me to continue for it all right so this is say this is your first time running this deck real quick we'll put him down as our starter as he is you shuffle a bunch and you draw your five heal I've had really bad luck so don't let this reflect too terribly on the deck so say these are what you have. You can put them there to help you remember not to shuffle deck. Um, honestly, I'd also probably ditch one of these to redraw three because I just drew another one and a front trigger. And then these go to the bottom of your deck. And you shuffle. And from there, the game sort of progresses. You say you go first, so you draw a card. Not the greatest. You'll ride Gemini draw one your turn goes by maybe you take do um we'll give that there put that there we'll just go through this like it was normal face um and say you take two damage why is that still going there i can't manipulate that so say you take two damage all right now you have the option to ride either daughter or silent tom now both skill both of their main skills work on both being it would be early game, I'd probably personally ride Silent Tom, I'd call Daughter, and I'd enter battle phase. I'd attack with Silent Tom first, um, counter blast one, give him 6k for his skill when he's placed, and drive check, I drove check a Gemini, and then I attack, being I have four more cards, she gets her bonus. And my opponent's forced to throw down a 30, 30k in total to stop my attacks. Because whatever his vanguard is, I'm assuming at grade 1, he'd need a minimum of 10k to guard. So either he's ditching triggers or grade 1s, but he can't against Silent Tom, so only against her. I'd end my turn. My turn progresses. My opponent deals me, let's say, 2 more damage. And by this point, I'm forced to guard with at least my flogel to stop his third attack my turn rolls around i stand i draw 
Unfortunately, all I've gotten is waterfalls, so I have to go into waterfall. Not, again, not the most preferred thing, but hey, we'll call it Gemini, so if I ever, it comes down to needing the counterblast. Um, in this situation, if you had to ride waterfall, I think your best bet is to give the power to your Imperial daughter, or your promised daughter, for the potential bonus you'll get. And at this point, battle phase... I don't get the 10k bonus, so I just attack for 13. My opponent would probably throw down some sort of guard. I would twin drive, front trigger. I'll, I technically don't get that because I don't have a... Actually, to be fair, with how this deck runs, I would probably just throw that there. Just It lessens my hand size, but it would at least allow me to proc. And then the next trigger would be CEO. Yeah, you'd probably want to do that. Your goal is to throw down as many rearguards of different clans. But with that being stated, I can now boost Imperial Daughter's skill still, or Promised Daughter. I keep saying Imperial. It's not Imperial. Goes off 43. Opponent probably survives the turn. I'm limited on resources, so I have to take a end turn. My opponent attacks me. Let's say he deals a damage. And throughout the next two attacks, I have to guard both with those. So now I'm pretty limited on resources, but at this point, it's my final turn. I would assume I stand and draw. Now you can ride Waterfall. You can apply the Force Mark to Waterfall. And that might be if you want to play it yourself. From there, I would probably call CEO and another waterfall this gives me all but royal paladin effects and from there you just sort of attack he gets his 10k your heal trigger procs say you give the 10k there you heal one there you go and then you just attack and attack that's sort of the whole basic rundown. Hopefully you win and have a better opening hand than three waterfalls. Literally all three in the first few turns. But the deck is pretty consistent with its draws. You don't normally run into big pockets of grade threes, even though it is on the grade three heavy side. You normally get all the units you need in your open hand to ride. Overall, there is some adjustments I'd like to make to this deck. But that requires me to play test it more. So I really can't say for certain how great this deck is, but it does allow you to do a bunch of stuff. And it leaves you a bunch of options, and it's too versatile for a lot of V standard decks to fight against. Because they're all sort of focused around one thing, whereas this takes little pinches from everything and can really cripple Royal Paladin or Cogger's Formation with its Retire. It gives you the superior hand if you draw the right draw cards, if you, run, if you can main the Oracle Think Tank stuff. It gives you the multiple attacks and the power of Nova's. And it gives you the superior call of Royal Paladin. So your feel should never really be too lackluster. And overall, that's really all I got to say about this deck. Um, if you guys did enjoy, please let me know down in the comments below. This is a pretty interesting deck in my opinion. And I want to see how you guys think you can improve upon it. Um, other than that, until next time guys, I've been the Silver Wolf and I'll see you all later. Peace.